Yo, what is going on, my YouTube people? 2099 back here with another video. And in today's video, I'm honored to be joined with Art from Team Melly Talk. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, doing all right. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the future of the Iranian national team after what may have been a very disappointing World Cup performance in Qatar. But before we do, if you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to smash that subscribe button and smash the like button as well. I'm very close to 3,000 subscribers. Obviously, I'm going to put the links of Art and his channel and social media links down in the description for you guys to check out. So we're going to start our first point here. I don't think we can really go in depth talking about the future of the national team. It if we don't talk about what's going on right now. I'm going to let you talk about what's really been going on in this World Cup because you've been there. You've watched the games. In that first game against England, you know, I just, I had a bad feeling about that game right from the beginning. You know, I tried to say early on, I was trying to be very positive. Hey, you know, don't worry. You know, we could cause some surprises against England. Even before Baron Van got hurt, I already had a bad feeling about that game. And unfortunately, you know, the way the score ended up, yeah, but I guess my bad feeling turned out to be correct. <laughs> Dead. You know, at that time, I was feeling very down, but, you know, the win against Wales was, was epic. It was a great way to bounce back after a, after losing to England 6-2. When talking about the game against the United States, I just feel like Iran came to that game playing for the draw. They knew a draw would be good enough to get them to the second round. This World Cup turned out to be a lot more political than we would have liked it to be, and unfortunately, it did play an effect. Nevertheless, we move on, and we're going to talk about coaches and the managers. Carlos Kairos, I, I don't think it's been official yet, but there's talks of him staying until the Asian Cup. Nothing is confirmed. Who would you like to see come in? Or would you like to see Kaos out? Do you think it's wise to kick him out for now with everything that's going on in Iran? You know, I recently said that Iran needs a new identity. It means time to move on to a different coach. I feel like Iran has just been, you know, latching on to Carlos Queiroz for a long time. Now, he left. Yeah, we saw what happened with Wilmot. So that wasn't good. Um, you know, Stragan Skocic came in, you know, right the ship. I know people weren't a big fan of him. We eventually saw what happened. You know, he lost the locker room. I mean, it's a very simple way to answer this. I would like for Iran to get a new coach, you know, someone who's going to really bring in this new identity, help develop some really good players, look for some more speedy and faster midfielders. It's also a situation of, I don't want to see Carlos Queiroz leave just for Iran to get some other coach that, you know, turns out to be a disaster. So it's like I said, it's hard to answer that. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And I think the, the, we're, we're just too stuck on his defensive side, which I think is now giving us more harm than good. I think we're kind of past that stage. And I think it's unfortunate because I feel like our defensive days are pretty much almost over. We were just relying on our defense way too much. When we've got one of the best strikers in the world up top and we're, he was just completely frozen against the U.S. He can't do anything if the, if the players are all going to be defensive. And this is him for Osmoon. Granted, he's been a little bit disappointing, but we're not going to talk about him for now. World Cup was screaming for talents such as Alaya Saimanesh specifically. I know he was injured, but I think in that Wales game, if he would have been on that game would have been a lot easier for us to win but like you said we need a new identity we're stuck on the past for way too much now and we're not going to evolve like this if you take a look at japan south korea for example they're moving on constantly iran is in a situation where you know football isn't the top priority right now obviously even when the world cup is around and it's not easy with the choices that have been made in the past few months it's been poor it's been really poor football's not the top priority but you know you brought in the very good example when you talk about south korea and Japan making that progress. You know, we want to see Iran doing in that progress too. You know, I want to see Iran play, you know, much more attacking football. You know, we want to see you know, there's the great passing, you know, more goals against the run of play. I mean, I, I shouldn't mention so much more goals against the run of play. I mean, this past tournament, Iran did, did score four goals. So that was a nice change. I mean, mind you, yeah, two of them were against England when the game was already way out of reach. I'm glad that we saw a win that didn't involve, you know, an own goal on a free kick really late. You know, that win against Wales was, you know, fully, you know, fully earned, well-deserved. For Iran, they, they're able to see Japan and South Korea doing well. Iran's got to be doing the same thing as well, too. How do we get past this stage now. We have talents that are very raw, that aren't really proven enough. Should we stick to our old players like we did here in this World Cup, or should we now start trusting our young players more and more? Now, knowing Carlos Queiroz, he always sticks with the players he knows. The player could be 55 years old. Carlos Queiroz is probably still going to play him. But we're at a point where we've got players like Alaya Saeed Manesh, Yadigar Rostami. We've got Sadar Mohami, which isn't necessarily young. He's 26, I believe. For Iran standards, that's pretty young anyways. Salmani as well. So these type of players, which haven't really been given 
that much opportunity. I mean, apart from Maharami, but for the rest, at least, we haven't really seen them play for the national team because we keep on playing our, our players that, you know, always play. Yes, they have to be going all in more with the younger footballers. I mean, you have no choice. And now that this World Cup is finished for Iran, I mean, yeah, we know there's still a few more years for Taremi and Azmoun and Ezatulahi, you know, just to name a few players. We know there's still a few years left in them. But yes, they have to immediately go to these other younger footballers, see what they can bring. And plus, you know, we know that they'll bring energy and more excitement to Team Ali as well, too. I mean, Amir Hossein Hossein Zadeh was not on Iran's roster. He was a 26-man roster. Carlos Quiroz decided to bring 25, four of them goalkeepers. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, I agree. And just take a look again. I'll keep bringing Japan and Korea as an example. Japan, you know, they've got players like Takefusa Kubo, they've got Kaoru Mitoma, all these type of players that are young and they're given a lot of chances. Moriyasu, the manager, gives a lot of hope in them and that's what they produce. They're very good players. Whereas when it's for Iran, it doesn't seem like it. And I, when's the last time Saad Manish played significant amount of minutes for your national team? I don't even remember myself. If we keep on going like this, it's not going to work out. We just have to be honest with ourselves. I know it's easy to look at Carlos Quiroz and say, look at these players he brought. But he also came back, you know, a couple months before the World Cup. So it was really, really expected that he was going to bring a huge majority of players that he was comfortable with. I just thought it would have been nice to bring, you know, a couple of these other younger players. Because when I look back at the time Omid Ibrahimi picked up that injury against Nicaragua, you know, that was like, you know, I feel like a lot of Team LA fans are hitting the panic button. And when I look back at that, I'm just like, say, I say, to, I remember saying to myself, look, we've got problems. Because Omid Ibrahimi, I believe, already 35 years old, playing in Qatar. I want to say, I'm pretty sure he was playing for al Wakra, But he was already 35 years old. I was not that concerned when he was hurt because, you know, he's, well, he's definitely well past his prime. I completely agree with that. We're going to move on to another point here, and it's, should we call out more dual citizens or dual nationals, however you want to call it? I'm going to take a look at Morocco here, which most of the rosters are players that are not even born in Morocco, and look how well they are doing. Our only dual national is Somon Gotos, and he's played one game, and it was against the U.S., and he wasn't impressive either. I mean, I like the idea of going after these other players and making the team much more competitive. Carlos Queiroz, I mean, look, he went after Ashkan Dejaga, also got Reza Guchanejad. And look, I mean, Reza, Reza Guchanejad was just an absolute, was just the man for Iran. I'm okay with going after some of these other players, you know, especially if they want to play for Iran. I think it's an important point, and especially after seeing, you know, a team like Morocco that have shown that there's talent that comes from their country but that just aren't in the country itself and when they all come together that's what they can produce and that's a point i think that can be a consideration for your national team do i think it's gonna happen probably not i'm maybe like one or two players down the line but nothing too big i think i feel like ryan tafazoli was just that player that people would just were just wanting iran to call up so badly but i know what you mean though if there is that eligible player that could really ch change every change so much for team ellie yes of course i would like to see iran call that player up we're gonna move on now to the last point of the video and that's what should team Melly fans expect from your national team in the next few years what obviously there's the asian cup coming up which in my personal opinion and I don't have much hope considering how the other Asian teams have played at this World Cup. I don't really consider us as the best Asian team. It hurts to say, but it has to be said. Well, the aim obviously is to win the Asian Cup, but unfortunately, you know, that has become, that has been mission impossible for a long time. Then, you know, there was always those quarterfinal matchups against South Korea where, you know, Iran would win one and South Korea would win one. You know, it's, it's hard to mention. I mean, a part of me wants to say, okay, I guess start getting better at penalties because maybe their best chance of winning the Asian Cup is to just, you know, beat some of these better Asian teams in a penalty shootout. But I, I don't like to I don't like saying that. You know, I don't want to see Iran just squeak their way past each team, past the better teams just by penalties. I mean, sure, you know, if they got to the final and got to a shootout and won, I wouldn't complain. You know, many Team LA fans, including myself, you know, we want to see Iran beat the best teams in Asia by, you know, beating them, you know, in regulation, you know, scoring more goals in them, outplaying them, you know, finding a way to win. Something that has to be considered as well is the whole political background that goes into Iran. Obviously, I don't want this video to get political. It does play a huge effect 
in Iranian football because then there's a lot of infrastructures, academies and such that are not putting, that are not given attention towards. And again, compared to South Korea, Japan, Saudi Arabia even, and have all these great football academies and infrastructures, it's really a shame. It's really a shame because if we had that, we would have been not only the best team in Asia, but we would be definitely a top team in the world because we're doing this well without all of these. Now imagine what we would be with all of these. Yeah, you make a very good point. I mean, I think it's another thing worth mentioning is that, well, look, I, I talked about this recently too, though, is that there's a lot of distractions. You know, the Iranian Football Federation has all kinds of corruption, you know, different, I like to call it different groups of people lobbying for their power. And, you know, they don't put the national team at the top of their, at the top of their agenda. And that's what's really disappointing. But I also just need to say that, you know, when we saw how Iran played, you know, especially against the United States, you know, midfield being too slow, that's something where I have to say that you know there's got they've got to find they got to develop yes you're right develop some better players but they got to have faster midfielders also and you know i think in recent years the achilles the, the achilles heel of team Italy has been the midfield and we saw that at this at this world cup unfortunately another question another point is well this whole friendly debacle was a huge pain to deal with for the past few months for your national team we've had that kind of friendly canceled and then we went to having no friendlies then we went to having a friendly with algeria which we lost a lot of stuff went on this year surrounding Iranian national football and friendlies. But do you think that will kind of get fixed now that this whole World Cup thing is behind us? Probably not. And uh, I think the next time Iran plays a friendly, I'm guessing it's going to be against Uzbekistan or against Syria. All right. Well, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please smash that subscribe button and that like button as well. Like I said, I'm very close to 3,000 subscribers. And of course, I'll be putting my friend's social media links down in the description for you guys to check out. I just want to say thank you very much for joining this video. I just want to say, you know, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And, you know, to all the Team LE fans, you know, keep on supporting Team LE, the national team of Iran. You know, got to be there for them, you know, through thick and thin. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Damn, I'm on red alert.